Hello, 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 everyone. How are you all today? We have Elizabeth, we have Jill, Deborah, we have Beverly joining us today, and many, many more of you here live and also on the replay. Hi, Beverly. And let me know that you can hear me and see me just fine. A great Beverly. And we have Tamara. Hello, lots of long time clients, new clients, and also some of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting with yet. And I do look forward to, if you haven't yet booked your consult with me for the, the 3D stuff, right? The skincare routine, what to do at home and in the clinic, as well as ongoing support. Uh, you can book your session with me over at the School of Radiance. Use promo code MASTERCLASS15 to save a little bit. Now, what we're going to talk about, is, it goes a little bit deeper in regards to what I share in a consultation. Because when someone first starts working with me, I'm your skin mentor, right? How do we find as non-toxic products as possible that are actually going to be providing the results that we are after and also teaching you to become a more conscious consumer. And a lot of you start to work with me when you're sort of in your own little hero's journey. Every time you watch a Star Wars movie, there's always, you know, the hero and you know, something's got to change. They got to do something. Then they meet a mentor. Then they go through struggles and they get the reward. And then the movie's over, right? So we go through multiple of these throughout the years. Now, one of the key things that I've learned in observing high vibe radiant clients since 2011 is that some clients tend to fare better than others through life's stressors and obstacles. And they actually become more beautiful and radiant with age. Hi, Joni. Great to see you here. There's some new names, new names and faces here, which is fantastic. So why do some people tend to go through life with greater grace and ease when we're going through, you know, the hero's journey of going through life transitions, myself included, I went through a massive life transition, uh, even just recently. And because I have a beautiful radiant mindset, which we're going to be focusing on here in today's masterclass. And I take really good care of myself, right? I'm sipping on superfoods and adaptogens all day, every day. I do a lot of lifestyle stuff behind the scenes to reduce oxidative stress status, toxic buckle load. By the way, if you haven't yet tried Organifi, I highly recommend it. I would go so far as to say, I think this stuff really helped to save my adrenals uh, because a lot of times for women in particular, when we're going through life things, we feel like we always have to have it put together. And sometimes we have to take leadership roles and that can actually pull us out of our feminine and put us more into a masculine state, which is going to tank your adrenals and also result in aging even faster. So let me know in the chat if any of you are resonating with that. And let me know questions that are arising in regards to what a radiant mindset, what a beautiful and radiant mindset looks like and what some of those practices might be that you think about what having a radiant AM and PM and thought process and emotional state might look like. What are some things that are coming up for you? Because the more you interact here in the chat, the deeper we will go and might actually um, trigger some interesting discussion points that I might not have thought about or prepared for in this lesson. So first and foremost, when it comes to having a beautiful and radiant mindset, this is something I really love to teach in the School of Radiance because there's some added things that I do behind the scenes too in regards to frequency and energy technology that just makes a huge difference. Every single thing around us, whether it's fabric, whether it's food, whether it's different cells or animals, and the cells in those animals all have a specific frequency. And when you think of the frequency spectrum, you've probably seen this shame is way down at the bottom and love and gratitude are way up at the top. So every emotion has a specific frequency. And today I am so pleased to share that I started my day off with immense love and gratitude. 
And so this is really actually where spirituality and prayer come in big time. If you are looking to become your most beautiful, radiant self, there is one key factor that I see in my most beautiful, radiant clients that also recover faster and respond better and have more powerful outcomes than those who don't. And I think what's going on here are the emotional states. And one of the things about being in a beautiful feminine vibration and energy is that there's also this energy of surrender. So that's why having faith and a spiritual practice are so key so that you can give it up to the big guy if you're having struggles. If you are having thoughts come in that are more in a negative emotional state, I'm going to share some strategies to keep you more in a positive emotional state here, don't you worry, and some things that I do. But just recognize that when you're going throughout your day and you're having these thought forms come in that get you worried about something, maybe you get triggered on social media or something like that, it takes you out of the present moment and worrying about something that actually isn't in your immediate surroundings. And that can be really damaging with your own personal self-talk, your emotions, as well as how you're connecting with others. And at the end of the day, it's my goal to help you become more beautiful and more radiant so that you have better connections and communication and love for yourself. And then of course, you're going to be able to carry that on to those you love the most or those you engage with the most frequently in your personal and professional careers. So what is this positive emotional state and why does it impact our beauty and radiance? If you're stressed out, what are some of the first signs of stress on the face as well as the hair And also in regards to the body and body composition and maybe putting on a little extra pounds. What happens is you've you've likely heard this this is not new information, but I'm going to frame it in a way that might be new for you. When you get stressed out, your skin and your hair and your eyes are going to show you this in a couple of weeks, okay? That's why when you're constantly looking after yourself, you're in a positive emotional state as often as possible, which is actually requiring a little bit of training. And I'm going to teach you how you can slowly start to incorporate those strategies to tune out the negative emotional states or those negative thought forms that actually might not actually be from you. Um, so that's why having a spiritual practice, faith-based practice is so key to being beautiful, radiant, and resilient. Again, it's just a key factor that I've seen over the years in clients that they just look incredible and, but they want to look as good as they feel. And they all have some type of uh, faith in spiritual. So I really want to emphasize that the better we look after ourselves day in and day out, that's where reducing oxidative stress comes in, reducing this toxic bucket you're eating great food. So for example, taking the biome test that's on my biohacking page over at the school of radiance.com, tons of resources there. It's like $150 test. It allows you to determine which foods are ideal for you. Consuming things like the Organifi superfoods and adaptogens, they're going to be fueling your cells and your body with superfoods to basically help with your cellular machinery to continue onwards and not get sluggish and deficient. Adaptogens are going to help your body manage stress. And adaptogens are really key at supporting your adrenals, which are kind of like glands that sit on top of your kidneys. When you're stressed out, you're gonna get too much cortisol. It's gonna mess with your sleep. We're gonna talk about sleep too, and how setting yourself up for success for sleep with having a beautiful and radiant mindset is really key. That's one thing that a lot of my clients are struggling with is sleep. And you're not going to have a beautiful and radiant emotional state or physicality if your sleep is suffering. When you are starting on a new path of doing something and say you found a mentor, hello, right here, that is here to give you these little nudges about things maybe you didn't think about before or in a way that you haven't thought about in your mind and bring it to awareness, 
you then have the nudges to start to employ these strategies. You will not get anywhere if you try. I love to study linguistics. And in fact, there's so much that I have done over the years, tens of thousands of dollars invested in stage presentation and teaching and communicating so that when I'm on stage and I'm delivering a message much like this one, I'm using specific words. I'm in a specific state myself. And also the intention behind what I'm doing is to help serve and help you become more beautiful and radiant. So there's a lot that goes into this beautiful and radiant presentation. However, the mindset stuff isn't talked about enough in the skin rejuvenation, cosmetic dermatology, plastic surgery space. So when we're getting to maybe why you are interested in learning about skin and rejuvenation stuff, it's the underlying why of that is confidence. Now you're going to be your most confident version when you're actually in your most positive emotional state and you've learned to tune down that reptilian part of the brain or those external negative thought forms that aren't from you, but are trying to influence you and keep you in fear, in doubt, in shame, bring up things you really don't need to worry about in order to survive. When you learn to turn that down, it's not trying to turn it down. Again, getting back to word choice, it's doing. You are actively employing these things because you will not get anywhere if you try and start to notice things those types of words and word choices with those who you engage with. Those who you engage with who are doing really well in life versus those who are constantly struggling and constantly rehashing the past and all these things. The people that aren't doing as well are using word choices like trying. And those who are doing well are actively doing things to better themselves. And they're typically in a more positive emotional state, which then gets back to the why of rejuvenation, which is to build, which is to, I give it away, which is to enhance confidence to build community. So when you are in a more positive emotional state, you're going to be in a better position to then build your community. Nobody wants to hang out with a negative Nancy. Everybody wants to hang out with a positive Patty. We want to hang out with people that help us feel better and that are going to tell the truth and are coming at us and engaging with us in the highest way possible, not just to surf their own personal agenda. So be aware of the different types of words people are using, those who try, those who are busy in contrast to those in your lives who are role models and mentors that are doing really well at life. So please let me know any interesting thoughts that have come up in the chat. I warmly invite engagement and questions you have in regards to having a beautiful and radiant mindset. Getting back to positive emotional states, this is absolutely everything. And I know, especially right now with all of these novelties coming up in our world, if you turn on the news, there's always something new to focus on. It's like the lens continues to focus on something that's novel. That's done to grab your attention. However, we live in a time where there's too much stimulation and basically engagement with our emotions and our thoughts and our nervous system. And it's actually causing a system overload. This is going to increase your body's oxidative stress status and overall cell danger response. That's actually the science between stress as well as toxins, negative thought patterns, and your health and well being. When you start to identify when a negative thought form comes in, it's really important for you to actually bolster up your internal protective and external protective mechanisms and learn to either turn it off or if you're engaging in some in a conversation, learning how to, in a loving way, disengage and have an in and out conversation. A lot of my clients, uh, one of my dear clients, Stephanie, one-on-one clients, skin camper, 
School of Radiance member, she is sort of one of those women who always wants to be serving her family members and loved ones if they need help. However, it's very important to ensure that you're always putting your oxygen mask on first and also learning to have boundaries. Boundaries is something you may or may not have taught to you as you grew up. I did not. This is something that I had to learn, which is very important in personal and professional relationships. So having boundaries over different things to talk about, this is also where we get into communication etiquette, what's appropriate to talk about, what's not appropriate to talk about. What what can you talk about with someone who has shared values with you? What can you talk about with someone who you don't have shared values with? Right now, we're at a massive human bifurcation point. Everyone has opinions on everything. People are scared to uh, basically offend anyone. It's, you know, what happened to a sense of humor and what happened to a joke. So just be aware with who you're communicating with that may be operating in that way. When people are operating in that way, they're lit up about this, that, and the other thing. This is where you start to have in and out engagements. You're coming in, you're being loving, you're checking in. How are you? What's going on? And if you notice the vibe starts to shift, that's when you very politely make your exit and say, okay, got to go. Great to see you. We'll, you know, have a conversation another time as well. So protecting your energy when it comes to your interpersonal relationships, both personally and professionally, is really important. When people ask you a question, you don't have to answer. In fact, when people ask you a question and it's a topic that you know is energetically pulling you out of a beautiful and radiant state, you can actually simply respond with a calibrated question. This is actually where a lot of sophisticated uh, personality archetype identification, negotiation, communication skills come in really handy to protect your energy and keep you in a more beautiful, radiant state. So if someone, you're engaging with someone, they're asking you some questions on topics where you might not have shared values on anything, especially now, I actually encourage you to respond with a how or a what question. What do you think about this? How do you think that this is going to impact our lives? And what you're doing is you're actually saving your energy from being pulled into someone else's negative thought forms that they don't know how to handle. And you're you're starting to learn and employ strategies to handle them yourselves. What you're actually doing is you're taking away their coming to you for an energy exchange, you're asking a calibrated question, how or what to then get them to solve their own problem and thus protect your energy. There's a lot more that goes into these interpersonal exchanges to keep you in a more positive emotional state. This isn't necessarily putting your head in the sand. This is actually being more intelligent in your communication and not getting emotionally triggered by some things. Now, that being said, it is important to not numb out. The mindset of being beautiful and radiant does not involve going into an overindulgence and a numbing out with substances or distractions. When you are distracted from what you are here to do, you're going to become scrambled. So what I'm doing is I'm actually tiptoeing on some very important life changing messages and topics and presenting to your awareness, a lot of the deeper things that I cover in the school of radiance. And if you haven't yet booked a one-on-one with me, if you booked a one-on-one, let's have a follow-up. I'll answer any questions you have about the school of radiance membership If you're new here, head on over to the School of Radiance, go to the consultation tab, book an introductory call, and I'll share with you some different strategies and approaches that I think could be helpful for you and kind of give you that strategic roadmap. That's over at theschoolofradiance.com. 
the deeper aspects of things that are going on here to be beautiful and radiant is an energy. It is a positive emotional state combined with having a lower oxidative stress status and an emptier toxic bucket. This is why I love to share my personal detoxification protocols, as well as easy detoxification protocols to basically help to reduce things like pathogens and organisms that hijack your body's machinery to get you to eat or consume different things to fuel them. Example of what those organisms are include yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metals, and also parasites. And we just had a super full moon recently. And one of the interesting things that happens with these organisms is that they can significantly impact your neurological and your emotional states through withdrawing of nutrients or things that are happening in your body. When you think of the moon, the moon moves the tides. We are primarily composed of water. So different things external to us can impact our emotional and our beauty and radiant states. So it's not about being paranoid about things around you. It's simply having an awareness. If something is pulling you out of a positive emotional state, such as love, gratitude, being of service, being in your highest potential, having beautiful, positive engagements, both personally and professionally, as well as with yourself, having positive self-talk, if you're noticing that things are pulling you out of that, I'd like you to start noticing them. And I don't want you to try and reduce them. I want you to actually completely start to turn down that knob. For me to start to learn how to be in more positive emotional states took a lot of education, a lot of learning, a lot of training, and a lot of time. It took me at least seven months to employ these things. And again, the impetus for me to learn these things was to how to be a better teacher, presenter on stage, and communicator here at Masterclasses on the School of Radiance podcast with my dear one-on-one clients, skin camp group coaching, and of course, the School of Radiance membership where we go very deep on these topics that I don't always like to go super deep on these topics with people who aren't yet ready for the messages because it's not going to land. You have to be at a point in your life where you're ready to make these specific changes. The driver for you might to look better and feel better, sleep better, and have more balanced hormones. When we do all these things in sequence, it's not necessarily a sequence. It's actually just having an awareness of these little pieces that you can start to do to make a change will all have a cumulative effect, not only with your body, mind, spirit, energy, but in a more kind of scientific way, the overall oxidative stress status. One of the cool things about cold therapy and also hormesis and also heat therapy is you're actually giving your body a little bit of a stressor. Unfortunately, what's happening right now is so many people are getting incredibly stressed out with the woes of the world, those external negative thought forms, which are not in your highest, they're there to distract you from really what your purpose, what your life mission is, and what lights you up and makes you happy. So this is kind of the world that we're living in right now. It's kind of this brave new world, right? That uh, one of my dear longtime clients, Michelle, we were talking yesterday. She had some questions about the School of Radiance membership. And after I cleared up a couple things for her and let her know that you essentially, how I work with my skin camps, skin tutorials, and also the School of Radiance membership you don't have to do things in sequence. You can focus on topics that are most important to you. This is where I see a lot of online learning going wrong 
is you can get a little bit overwhelmed with having to do things in sequence. Say life happens, you have to take a week and a half off to, you know, deal with a life emergency that requires your emotional intelligence and wellness. Sure, get back into it when you're ready to. And it doesn't have to be in sequence. You can you actually get access to everything, all the different topics, and simply pick and choose which is most important for you. And eventually you'll get through them all, either attend live or catching the replays. And you will then have all of the pieces of the puzzle to develop and cultivate more radiance. So if we talk about for a second, what is beauty? What is radiance? Let me know in the chat, what is beauty and radiance to you? Everyone seems to have a different definition of things depending on how they were raised, the culture, their socioeconomic status, relationships that they've been in, and also where they are in their own hero's journey. So let me know what beauty and radiance mean to you. When we think of beauty, we might think of a more superficial construct like clear skin, fewer fine lines and wrinkles. Yes, Elizabeth, it is a tough question to ask. When we think of beauty standards, when you think of the word beauty standards, you think of actresses and models and what you see on social media. When I think of beauty, I think of nature. I think about people who emanate this gorgeous energy that I just want to be around all day, every day. When I think of beauty, I think of good and I think of pure. It's very different construct of thinking about beauty in its most purest elemental form, which in and of itself has a very high vibration. Beauty constructs are very different. So this is where programming comes in. You can be, from a beauty construct perspective, not looking like Kim Kardashian. You could be a little shorter. You might not have, you know, a symmetric face. However, if you have a specific way about you and you look healthy, you have a reduced oxidative stress status, that is going to make you more attractive. Now, having a beautiful mindset is so key because all of these people that are functioning in the beauty construct model from society, they're missing the mark and they're throwing their money away when they're purchasing skincare, makeup, and investing in rejuvenation. This is is significant here. Because I have come across many men and women who look like they take really good care of themselves. They have their hair and makeup done nice. Their outfits look great. And then you engage with them. They open their mouths and it's nothing but nonsense, right? They open their mouths. They don't sound very intelligent. They're, you know, looking at their Apple watch. They're on their phone a ton, They're totally distracted and their minds are completely scrambled. What I mean by scrambled are non-coherent thought processes. What impacts that? Toxins impact that. Oxidative stress impacts your brain's neurological function. So getting to the topic of the mindset of beauty and radiance, this is a very deep topic. It's not just about looking great. It's about having your body in such a pure state that you are unable to be messed with. Or if you experience toxins through exposure, through air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and organisms, you have the resilience and the body's ability to manage that oxidative stress when it arises. So this is a very interesting concept, I understand, from someone coming from the skincare and rejuvenation space to make these connections. I knew early on when I started my my work online that I knew I'd get people 
for looking good, right? The skincare, the rejuvenation. And then over time with working together over years, we just had Kathy drop in here. Hey, Kathy, you start to learn that it's not just about the superficial and I don't just operate from the superficial. However, I had to figure out how to teach it because it was something that I kept seeing in my clients over the years, why some people show up and they light up the room, why some people show up and they bring down the energy in a massive way. What's going on here? What is this contrast all about? And I stumbled upon that in my client care, having performed over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures, researcher, teacher, presenter, all of these things. So there's basically kind of like two people, two groups of people that seek rejuvenation. One that just wants to look good in regards to the beauty construct. They want to look like, you know, Kim K on social media, just a prime example, right? She's always touted by, you know, celebrity dermatologists and plastic surgeons and influencers on YouTube is, you know, having this great ideal face shape. Well, same thing goes with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and Johnny Depp. There are people that actually do have strikingly symmetric ideal fa facial ratios. But what's interesting is that even if you don't have that and you are actively taking charge of your health, becoming as pure as possible, then the positive emotional state of being beautiful and then cultivating more radiance is actually a natural progression. So starting with cleaning up your skincare routine, personal care products, your deodorants, your toothpaste, your household cleaning products, your hair care, your skincare, absolutely everything you're using in or on your body or in and around your home, please, please stop buying products from third-party auction websites like Amazon and eBay. The counterfeit beauty and cosmetic industry is just as big as the drug trafficking trade. And, you know, there's some big disclosure pieces on this, including the, there's a Netflix series called Broken that actually says just that. And that's on Netflix, a huge, pretty big platform to be disclosing that information on. I would say so. So we know this. So please, please, please do not buy anything you're putting on or in your body from these third-party auction websites because you're very likely getting access to fake counterfeit products that isn't actually what it is. And the, the packaging can actually look ideal. And I actually see this quite a bit. That being said, some companies actually legitimately sell on these third-party websites. However, oftentimes it's even happened to girlfriends of mine, their skincare products gets ripped off and there's a counterfeit made and then they have to shut it down. So it happens quite frequently. So the next thing to be aware of with the, the concept of having a beautiful mind is what you're doing to stimulate your mind. Having hobbies, reading books, getting in nature, getting outside and grounding is really key. The next thing to looking good and feeling good, meaning you look healthy, you don't necessarily look like those celebrities and models in that social media beauty construct that I highlighted earlier, you cannot fit within that. However, people love to be around you. People tell you you're so beautiful and radiant, even though you might look a little different. That's okay. It's the vibe and the energy that you're giving off, which we're going to be getting into. So to truly be beautiful, if we were to say, take a look at different celebrities without makeup, you would very likely see over signs of toxicity and oxidative stress status and an actual visible display of the body going through cell danger response. What does this look like if the body is under stress, whether it's energetically, physically, emotionally, spiritually? How does this present on the skin? How does this present on the eyes? If we look at the eyes, that. And I studied the eyes for over 10 years in oculoplastics and ophthalmology. The eyes are not only a window to our soul, not to mention making direct eye contact with people is so key in communication, 
And when you're connecting with people and their eyes are darting all over here, you can tell a lot about someone's psychological state using techniques in NLP. And this is actually something I teach deeper in the School of Radiance membership as well, so that you're having engagements with the right people in the right way at the right time. And you can determine if someone's psychologically scrambled. Just to give you a little tip here before I talk about what the eyes tell us is when you're driving down the road and you see emergency response vehicles with the, with the lights going, when you're driving, everyone gets the rubber band neck effect, the rubber neck effect, right? And they, you know, all the attention goes there and people forget like what they were doing in that moment, right? So there are some really interesting psychological tactics that are used to actually keep people scrambled. Why do you think that might be? When people are scrambled, they're actually going to be more able to be manipulated. How can manipulation serve others and not yourself? By getting you to buy products and focus on certain pieces of media that feed into your insecurities and fear, basically getting into consumerism. It's a really interesting concept. And also when people are psychologically scrambled, they're going to be pulled off course of what they're here to do, what their sole mission is, what lights them up, what makes them happy, what brings them joy, what brings them peace. When we have a healthier population, we have a healthier population that then don't have as much of a need for watching scary and overdramatic movies and paying attention to certain pieces of content online that is pulling you out of that high vibratory state of love, peace, gratitude, and thus being beautiful and radiant. So there's, there's a lot of underlying things happening here, but I want to talk about, I wanted to talk about that because of the impacts of stress on the body, because I'm going to get you with the superficial aspects of how switching your psychological state into a more beautiful and radiant way of being is going to help you be more beautiful and attractive and people are going to want to be around you. Your life's going to be better. You're going to have opportunities and you're going to have great people show up to be your friend because at the end of the day, community is an aspect of survival. So what the eyes tell us when we are under stress is the eyes are going to talk to us. You're going to see things like redness, puffiness, darkness around the eyes. You're going to see um, a feel and irritation to the eyes. Also, another key thing that I've seen in my clients over the years is with every change of season, which is why I teach seasonal skin camps, because uh, it, those are tutorial based learning. So one on one is your skincare, your cake recipe, your rejuvenation recipe. Skin camps is the group coaching where I teach tutorials every week, depending on the season. I just taught a lesson on at home and in clinic heels ranging from gentle to strong and how to integrate that with your skin routine. And then the School of Radiance membership is where we go a lot deeper and we really focus on detoxifying not only our body, but also how we can even use energy technology to do that, how we can use frequency. A lot of things that I just don't share publicly because it's not going to land with most people if they're not at that right time to learn that information. So it's not definitely not for everybody, but it's a lot of really deep things that are key elements to radiance. So the eyes are going to tell us when the body is under stress, redness, puffiness, darkness. Also with changes of season, if your body isn't able to handle that influx of pollen changes or the leaves actually breaking down and sometimes even reducing different, uh, different things into the air, including molds, you're going to see an uptick in skin redness and irritation. So for those who are dealing with skin redness, skin sensitivities, things like rosacea, oftentimes it's an underlying factor of oxidative stress status and the toxic bucket being too full. You want to be at a point health-wise so that when you experience an emotional stress, when you experience a physical toxic stress, your body and the toxic bucket handle it. 
that's why it's almost like learning these different strategies are a way to build your resilience. When you're actively focusing on strategies to support your resilience, you're going to be better able to navigate your own hero's journey with myself as your mentor and like step one and two there. And you're going to have less signs of aging. Your aging will start to slow down. If you've ever been through a stressful event, you might look in the mirror and think, oh my gosh, my skin's aged overnight. And what happens at certain times in our lives in perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, hormones are changing and thus changes with our elastin and collagen. However, the more you're looking after yourself all the time, drinking your superfoods and adaptogens, putting your body through a little bit of stress, like say, for example, a cold shower in the AM, a bowl of ice water in the AM with your face in it, a hot bath where you're sweating or a sauna in the PM. These are all strategies to get your body used to stress. One of the things I will share share publicly here is that I actually did too much of this. So it's all about balance. When it comes down to balance, this is also where it comes down to balancing hormones, balancing your sleep patterns, and also balancing your masculine and feminine energies so that you can have more balanced relationships with yourself and in the energetic exchange that you have with others in personal and professional regards. Another way that being out of that beautiful mindset of beauty and radiance is also things like hair loss. If you've gone through a a stress in your life or have been exposed to different types of pathogens and organisms, they're going to be pulling on your nutrients. What happens is rapidly dividing cells aren't going to get the supply that they need. Essentially, it's going to be going to reparation and restoration as opposed to regeneration and rejuvenation. So that's why skin redness, skin irritation, also an uptick in acne. If you are acne prone and you're noticing that your breakouts are sticking around for weeks or months, or the breakout kind of goes away, and then you have that redness that sticks around, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is what that's called. That is a sign that your body is under stress. You should really be having a breakout and then, you know, a couple of days later, the breakout's resolving. And then a couple of days after that, the, the redness is then starting to resolve pretty quickly as well. That's a sign your body's doing really well. So there's so much that the skin, that the hair, as well as the nails tell us, if you have a lot of ridges on your nails, if you have very visible, sort of like the white half moon on the nails, if your nails are cracking, if your cuticles are basically a mess and you're getting peeling all the time, these are also signs of decreased oxygenation. So when it comes to having a beautiful and radiant mindset, you really do have to actually take an approach to purification that is of a likeness to priestess style detoxification and purification. It isn't about, okay, here's a two week cleanse. It isn't about, oh, you know, I'm going to try switching up my diet. I'm going to, you know, try using cleaner products. I'm going to try and exercise more. You know, I'm going to try this new meditation. It's about being consistent and starting to employ all of these really key pieces at a rate and in a state that's right for you. Okay. So the key aspect here that I really want to drive is this purification piece. If you think back to, you know, there's this really great book, The Myths of Avalon. Some of you may have read it in school. It's a fantastic book. So there are these, basically these priestesses and if you think back in times like that, when people used to operate in that way, they would essentially, these women would have men around them to protect them and so that they could do what they needed to do, you know, be in nature, do whatever they had to do, right? Cold, I can't speak culturally to exactly what they're doing, but this is something I think about. So when women are working on their purification, 
their minds start to work better and they start to actually become more balanced with their hormones and their masculine and feminine states. And I'm going to tell you this, when you are in your more feminine state and way of being, we all have different capacities to basically modulate how much masculine and energy that we have. It's very interesting. So at different times of life, you might be feeling like you're leading the household a little bit more. Women, this is going to age you. And men, it's actually very masculine. So when a woman is in her beautiful, soft, radiant energy, what happens is something very interesting. Men start to show up in a different way. Men have an instinctual desire to protect the feminine when they're balanced as well. So as you can see, when you focus on your physical purification, you focus on being more balanced and detoxed, your hormones are going to flow, your neurological wellness is going to flow, you're going to have better blood flow, essentially, especially when you're grounded and you're outside and you're in nature more, your organs and your brain are going to start to work better and your skin is actually going to have much better blood flow. This is why the practice of grounding and getting outside is so important and giving that example of, you know, when women are in nature and they have their protectors around, so they got to, you know, do their thing, whatever that might be. I can't speak to that. I wasn't there. Uh, but I'm sure your imagination can can reel a little bit that this is something that men really want to see more women do. And men really do want to be in that type of emotional state and engage in women that are in that emotional state, not to mention women wanting to engage with men when they are in a balanced masculine state too. So it's all about these energetic exchanges. I actually see this a lot with a number of my clients who are in uh, VP or executive roles. They feel like they got to get to the boardroom and hash it out with the men like me. And I'm here to tell you, actually, when you're in your more beautiful feminine energy, you can actually be, it's not the word persuasive is the wrong word. You can actually get more done and have more negotiation and bargaining power when you are in a feminine state. There's another really interesting concept that comes up when we talk about this with interpersonal exchanges is personality archetypes. Now you've probably heard of different strategies and different types of practices and platforms and systems out there. However, there's one that I have employed for over a year. And what happens with us that can jar us out of being in a beautiful and radiant mindset is actually if our identity and our personality archetype say we're supposed to be in this quadrant, right? It's just kind of how we've been designed since childhood. We do have specific personality archetypes. However, if we're functioning over here, there's going to be a mismatch. And in fact, that's going to age you better, age you faster. When you start to understand what your personality archetype is and how to better understand what other people's personality archetypes are, you can actually have better engagements with people from different personalities and energetics. Very cool thing. This is actually also a way to maintain your beautiful radiant mindset is to understand the mindsets of others that you're engaging in. So you can see there's this little like sophisticated little twist I threw in here. Better and the better you understand yourself, the better you understand different other types of personalities and energies, the better able you will be at maintaining your beautiful, positive emotional state of beauty and radiance. And quite simply to answer the question of what is radiance, radiance in accordance with Ayurveda medicine, and I actually just read this a couple of weeks ago and it makes complete sense. Radiance is the electromagnetic projection of all of your other body systems. It's actually considered the 10th body in Ayurveda and Ayurveda has been around for thousands of years. I love to look at ancient wisdom and ancient practices and how we can utilize those those understandings and techniques and strategies in our modern life. Well, people back then were going through a lot of similar things that we are now, uh, except we are going through them from the comfort of our couches. 
It's a little different in that regard. However, getting yourself out of that survival state and more into a positive emotional state is really what's going to start to instill change for you to start to practice a more positive emotional and radiant mindset and way of being in, in an energetic. So let me know any questions you have. That's really what I wanted to cover in today's lesson. We went pretty deep. I'm really thrilled for all of you who stayed the entire time. I'm sure you have some questions and you know how this relates to you and how you can employ these things because I gave a lot of different breadcrumbs on various topics that basically just need an entire additional lesson and strategy on to employ. But I'm sure that you've had new things brought into your awareness that you didn't think about before. And now you're going to start to employ changes. You're not going to try. You're going to employ those changes. So for those of you who are interested in learning more with me, I encourage you to head on over to the schoolofradiance.com. And if we have met already as a one-on-one, email me for a link for a 30 minute follow-up call and I'll get you updated on a couple of cool things behind the scenes and answer any questions you have, especially about the School of Radiance membership. And if you're new here, there's a lot of new faces. I'd love to get to know you. And on the consultation page there, um, there's a way for you to book a mini consultation with me. And I can basically help to point you in the right direction of how I can best support you in your skin rejuvenation and radiance journey. Because there's ways that I segment learning one-on-one -on -one consultations for specific skincare rejuvenation insights, skin camps for seasonal insights and tutorials, and the School of Radiance membership for really the icing on top. Nobody else is teaching conversational dining etiquette presentation in the way that I teach it and with the depth that I teach it at. And again, um, these are all excellent things for everybody to know so that you start to have better communication and relationships with yourself and others. And again, nobody else is teaching this all with the angle of being more beautiful and being more radiant. This is a very unique offering. Very excited to now have been able to finally figure out how to share this. And again, the way that you learn from me is all through, take it at your own pace. You get access to everything. You can select which topics you're wanting to start to do a deep dive on, depending on what's most important to you. And the School of Radiance membership is really where we go quite deep into detoxification, balancing hormones, getting better sleep using technologies behind the scenes that I don't talk about publicly that actually aren't in the biohacking space, but make a massive impact on how we are in our balanced states, especially with the sleep piece is really key. And to how to come across in a certain way, in a more beautiful and radiant way and get you stuck out of patterns and programs that you have been taught to communicate and present as so that you can step into your more radiant self. And uh, just thinking to dear Stephanie, she she's in the school of, she was a one-on-one, -on -one, done skin camp. She's in the school of radiance uh, membership. And she said, I don't know how to do it, but I feel like every lesson you're speaking to me. And it's because I know everyone who's in the membership. I have specific assessments and questionnaires. It will only take you five minutes and it will let me know exactly what you're wanting to focus on and get out of the membership. It's a year long container. I have it set up that way. It took me about seven months to employ these strategies and take it at your own pace. And we have bi-weekly, sorry, bi-monthly check-in calls. So you do get some additional face time with me. You don't have to attend live. If you can't, you can always catch those replays in the membership as well. So really cool offering really proud and honored to be able to share these really important strategies and, you know, rewire, rewiring the programs and systems. Alice, key takeaway for myself, system overload. I think that would definitely be for me. Yeah. I know that's why I struggle with incorporating and making permanent change. 
I need to get a simple minimalist life so I can take in knowledge coming in that will help me move in a radiant direction. Absolutely. Simplify it. Simplify your wardrobe. Start with that. <laughs> simplify your wardrobe, simplify your skincare products, simplify how you care for yourself and understand and, and learn about which strategies are seriously going to help move you in a radiant direction. So with the communication, with the relationship, with the detoxification, with the sleep optimization, it all has that angle of helping you look and feel your best. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for joining me here. And I will see you all again right here in the School of Radiance. God bless.